Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on derivatives, so specifically we're talking about instantaneous velocity and average velocity, how they are similar and how they're different, and we're just going to go through example problems. So let's go ahead and dive into it. First, we're going to go over how we can find these two different types of velocity. So first, looking at instantaneous velocity, what we talked about last time in the previous video is the position function is usually denoted as s of t. What we do here is that we're given a value t equals a, and we want to find the instantaneous velocity at that value a. So we take the limit as delta t goes to zero, and remember delta t just represents the change in time. So that means the change in time is getting really, really close to that value of a. And we take s of a plus delta t minus s of a all over delta t. And notice this is super similar to the limit definition of a derivative. So what this is doing is it's finding the first derivative at the point a, which is the instantaneous velocity. It is a velocity at an instant. So this is a bit different to average velocity. It is what it sounds like. We're taking the average velocity over a period of time. So in this case, our period of time is from a to b. And we take our position function, we plug in b and a, and we do some subtraction. So really what we're doing is like change in y over change in x right? That is very similar to slope. We take s of b minus s of a all over b minus a. So we're going to go ahead and see that in action. First, we have find the instantaneous velocity of s of t equals 4t squared plus 1 at the time t equals 3. So we're going to do this a long way, and then we're going to do it the short way. First, we want to do it with the limit definition. So we get that the instantaneous velocity, and I'll just write out v, is equal to the limit as delta t approaches 0, and then I'll plug in what we know right now. So we know a is going to be 3, so s of 3 plus delta t minus s of 3, and then all of this is going to be over delta t. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my s function. So notice right here, I put parentheses around that entire s of 3 because we have to remember to subtract all of it. We're not just subtracting the first piece of it, we're subtracting every single part. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this out a little bit. I don't know if you caught it in there. I forgot the plus one. Never do that, but it's okay. We're all human. So what I'm going to do now is look for terms that cancel. So here I get positive 36 minus 36, and I get positive 1 minus 1. So now what I'm going to do here is I have the limit as delta t approaches 0, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out a delta t. So if I do that, I'm left with a 24 plus 4 delta t. And all of this is going to be divided by delta t. And this is where I get my issue cancels out, right? So that delta t divides out. And now what we have is the limit as delta t approaches 0 of just 24 plus 4 delta t. If I plug in my limit, I know delta t goes to 0. So this becomes 24 plus 4 times 0. That whole term goes away, so we just get 24. And so this is our instantaneous velocity. It is the velocity at three seconds. So this was the long way to do it, and we could have done it a shorter way. Our shorter way would have been if we were to take the first derivative of s of t. And if we look up here, I'm going to end up getting 4 times 2, which is 8t plus 0. And I want to go ahead and now just plug in that value. So s prime of 3 is equal to 8 times 3, which is equal to 24. So we get the same answer and we save so much work. So the both ways work, but sometimes we like our shortcuts, right? So now we have the same function, but we want to go ahead and find the average velocity over the course of time 2 to 4. So if we remember how to do this, we get v, and I'm going to label it with a v below it, just the average velocity to show that. And I take my s of 4 and I subtract s of 2. And all of this is going to be divided by 4 minus 2. I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. And notice, again, we get 24 over the interval. And I'm going to write out the interval. So we start at 2 and we go to 4. 
and we are going to talk about why they are the same. And I have a beautiful drawing right here. So we have our function 4t squared plus 1. It is not drawn to scale. It's just drawn so I can see the average velocity a little better. So it should be a bit more narrow, but don't think about it. So we are finding the average velocity starting at 2 and then ending at 4. So really what we're doing is slope like we talked about earlier. So it's like we're doing change in y over change in x. And so the actual value that we're finding is the slope of this line right here, which the slope of this line is also going to give the instantaneous velocity at three seconds. So they're kind of doing similar things. One is with the slope and one is actually using the limit derivative definition because we're finding the slope of the tangent line also at the same value. So our tangent line would kind of look like that. Sorry if that's a little messy, but that's what's going on in the background here. So here we have an example that we're going to go through. So we have s of t equals t squared minus 4t on the interval 0 to 5. So our first objective is to graph this function. I'm going to go ahead and plug in points. So first we have 0 squared minus 4 times 0, and this gives me a value of 0. So here I have a point 0, 0. I'm going to plug in 1. Alrighty, so I drew my beautiful function, and actually we're not even going to have an arrow right here because we're stopping right at 5 because we're bounded between 5 seconds and 0 seconds. So those are going to be our endpoints. So now that we drew the position function, we are going to find and graph the velocity function. So if we remember, our velocity is equal to the first derivative of the position function. So if I do that, all I have to do is take the derivative of, two, of t squared minus 4t. So here I get 2t minus 4. I'm going to go ahead and graph that as well. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. Next, I plug in 1, I get negative 2, and then I keep going up like that. So at 2, I get 0. At 3, I get positive 2. And then at 4, I go up to here, and then it continues on. So I'll go ahead and fill that in. It looks like I'm going to go into my words, but that's okay. Oh, our t is absolutely beautiful. So here we have the velocity function. Let's talk about what this tells us about the position. So right here in this interval, we have that our velocity is negative, right? Because we're below the x-axis. When our velocity is negative, our function is decreasing. So notice we're going down. And then as soon as we hit a velocity of 0, our function is unchanging. It is neither increasing or decreasing. And so now if I look right above, I am now in the positive area, right? So this whole area from 2 all the way to 5, my function is positive because it's above the x-axis. And this also goes to show that our function, our position, is now increasing. So notice how the derivatives tell us what our function is doing. So let's go ahead and talk about the average velocity over the interval 3 to 5. And actually, we get to use our beautiful chart that we already created. Because if we want to find the average velocity, so I'll write that out, v average, this is going to be s of 5 minus s of 3 all over 5 minus 3. But we already found these values in our chart, right? So s of 5 is equal to 5 minus s of 3, which is negative 3. And all of this is going to be divided by 2. So here I have 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. So our average velocity over this time period is just going to be 4. Now we want to go ahead and find the instantaneous velocity at time equals 2 seconds. So again, we're not going to do the long way this time. We're going to go ahead and use a shortcut. So I'm going to take our derivative. But remember, our derivative was equal to the velocity function. And so this is 2t minus 4. And all we have to do is plug in that value. So s prime at 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 4. And this value is going to be 4 minus 4, which is 0. And so at the time equals 2, our velocity is unchanging. And that goes to show with our graph, right? Because that's when our linear function is 0. If you enjoy this video, I got many more like it. Check out the playlist. I have it linked down below. Otherwise, also give it a thumbs up and leave comments on other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.